So, some really, really fake mixing engineers decided to challenge my claim that room treatment does not matter. At least if you have real speakers. More on that later. You might remember this guy from the JH Audio 13v2 video. Suicide tier IEMs. How can you take this guy seriously? But oh well. This is a common train of thought in the self-proclaimed mixing engineer communities. So I thought I would put an end to this myth. If you have been watching my videos for a long time, you have likely seen this image quite a few times. This shows the preferred level of R for speech mixed in music. For music, we want the level of diffuse sound to be 5 dB higher than the level of direct sound. And the level of diffuse sound represents sound power. Sound power describes a sound wave propagating away from a source uniformly in all directions. Based on the findings, let's read what Floyd Tool stated. A good loudspeaker for this purpose would therefore be one that has two qualities. Wide dispersion, thereby promoting higher levels of reflected sound, and a relatively constant directivity index, so that the direct sound and reflected sound curves have similar shape. If you treat your room with absorption, reflections are of no value since they cannot be heard. I'm going to be comparing two loudspeakers here, the Norman KH310A and the Genelec A341A. Notice how on the right, the shape of the ceiling bounce is not of a similar shape to the total early reflection. However, on the Genelec A341A graph, a real speaker, they are of similar shapes. This is because the Norman KH310A is a traditional loudspeaker. There is phase interference occurring between the multiple drivers. As the Genelec A341A is a coaxial speaker, it does not have this issue. To to prevent the ceiling bounce issue in the 310A from being audible, you have to treat the ceiling. But if you get a real speaker like the Genelec A341A, you do not have this issue. So if you do not have a real speaker and are using a fake one instead like the 310A, then yes, you might have to treat your ceiling or floor. Here are two graphs that show the phase differences I was talking about. Remember what Tool said, we want a relatively constant directivity index. There is an error around 2 kHz for the Norman KH310A because there is phase interference occurring in this region. And as I said, the Genelec A341A does not have this issue. Now, the early reflections directivity index and the sound power directivity index that you can see on the bottom are calculated by subtracting the level of early reflections or sound power from the on-axis sound. If they are smooth, as they are for the Kef LS50 meta, when we correct on-axis performance, early reflections and sound power follow suit. Just something worth mentioning. If you are using good speakers, you can stop here. But if you are using bad speakers, you have a better option. And that is up mixing a stereo source. It could be to a 5.1, 7.1, or whatever. To recreate a concert hall experience, two speakers are not enough. I use Dolby's Pro Logic 2X with my Infinity system, and have gotten excellent results and highly recommended over traditional stereo listening. Studies have also proven that with the more speakers you have, the less room treatment even has an effect on preference. I am superior to you guys just using speakers for recreational listening. I create music, I am better than you! Except that it has been found that mastering engineers tend to prefer wide dispersion and many professionals prefer wide dispersion loudspeakers for recreational listening. In another test, when presented with differing levels of early reflections, recording engineers quickly adapted to the circumstances and got on with the job. In a test consisting purely of professional recording engineers, they preferred no treatment over absorption and diffusion. Ironically, the self-proclaimed professionals are the ones most susceptible to snake oil. The room will always cause issues below the transition frequency, but thankfully you can EQ most of the issues. This is because above the room transition frequency, direct sound dominates perception, and anything but flat direct sound Sound will damage fidelity. The only thing that cannot be EQ'd is speaker boundary interference response. In this image, you can see that on the right, there is a phase cancellation occurring at 200Hz. This is caused by sound waves reflecting from behind the speaker. In the left image for the speaker inside the wall, this issue obviously does not occur. However, this is trivial to solve by simply placing absorbers behind the speakers. This is the listening room of the king of headphones, Sean Olive. As you can see, it's not some loser weirdo treated room. It actually looks pretty nice. The only thing he had to do was put absorbers. With some simple EQ below the room transition frequency, this is an excellent sounding system. In conclusion, do not waste your time with serious room treatment. I would like to give a shout out to AZN Slider, Marshadow, Nell, Sasa, Kunda, Ninjakoma3, Hemeticus Tungaritis, Senivory, and Vsauce4. Thank you for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. If you would like to support the Realist Audio Reviewer on YouTube, consider donating through paypal.dagani1 at gmail.com.
Super chat donations in your comments. Join the channel membership for $4.99 a month for a shout out at the end of each video, as well as a special role in the Discord server with text to speech permissions. Or join the Patreon for $4.99 a month. YouTube takes a bigger cut of the $4.99 if you use the membership. As a result, using Patreon helps this channel more. If you want me to review a product, specify the product in your donation. If you would like to talk to people about anything audio related and much more without the fear of getting banned for no reason, Join the Apple House Sound Discord server linked in the description. As usual, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share this video with your friends. Have a nice day.